Can you put your hands together and celebrate the Lord for his goodness and for his faithfulness to the children of men? The scriptures say, oh, that men might praise the Lord for his wonderful works unto the children of men. We greet you in the precious name of Jesus, and we thank the Lord that you have been patient, patiently waiting for the beginning of Bible teaching tonight. We're going to go right into the word of the Lord, and uh, tonight we will continue in our teaching about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. No doubt you've heard the news of the church massacre in Charleston, and we ask that you would just remember to lift that family, that church family in your prayers, lift the, the pastor's wife, and lift the other uh, individuals. They've already released their names as to who they are, but lift them in prayer. Lift that um, city up uh, because we know that God has a way of bringing healing um, to the pain that they're experiencing right now. Um, the church has been greatly assaulted today. I just feel uh, Apostle and I have been feeling just very, very heavy today because of this. Um, and uh, not just a pastor of the church, but then there were three other pastors that were there at the church that were a part of that church, like under shepherds for different ministries. Uh, but we ask that you would please bear them up in prayer. Um, so uh, let me read this, and then we're going to go into a Bible teaching. I have 20 copies. I believe that should be sufficient. And page one is on one side. Page two is on the other, just in case there are some that don't have page one. But in Isaiah 33 and 10, is my Bible devotion to this morning, and it says, God himself shall work. Now will I arise, saith the Lord. Now will I be exalted. Now will I lift up myself. When the spoilers had made the land as waste, as, it de as if devoured by locusts, and the warriors who had defended the country sat down and wept like women, then the Lord came to the rescue. When travelers ceased from the roads to Zion, and Bashan and Carmel were as vineyards from which the fruit has failed. Then the Lord arose. God is exalted in the midst of an afflicted people, for they shall seek his face and trust him. He is still more exalted when in answer to their cries, he lifts up himself to deliver them and overthrow their enemies. Is it a day of sorrow with us? Let us expect to see the Lord glorified in our deliverance. Are we drawn out in fervent prayer? Do we cry day and night unto him? Then the set time for his grace is near. God will lift up himself at the right season. He will arise when it will be most for the display of his glory. We wish for his glory more than we long for our own deliverance. Let the Lord be exalted and our chief desire is obtained. Lord, help us in such a way that we may see that thou thyself art working. May we magnify thee in our inmost souls. Make all around us to see how good and great a God thou art. I just thought I'd share my devotion with you because it brought such comfort this morning to me. And uh, we're going to continue in our teaching about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Has it been a blessing to anyone who has assembled for some of the teachings or all of the teachings? Has it been a blessing? Amen. Do we have sufficient handouts? Amen. Amen. So let us go. And uh, the last number that you left off with was, and, and may I trouble you, I gave you my master. So if I can just get one, it doesn't matter, one of the handouts. So I won't be saying something, thank you so much, saying something that you don't have. In the book of Acts, speaking in tongues as a spirit gives utterance is the initial outward sign 
accompanying the baptism in the Holy Spirit. That was number five. Amen? All right. So number six, we're going to go to number six, and we may uh, say more than what you, well, we definitely have been saying more than what you have on the paper, but um, just bear along with us tonight as we purpose to get to number nine. Um, the baptism in the Holy Spirit brings what? Amen. The baptism in the Holy Spirit brings personal boldness. And what I want to uh, encourage you to do is to turn to Acts, the first chapter, and verse 8. And if you're taking notes, you might want to jot down Acts 2, 14 through 41. But we're going to go to that first uh, so that we can share a little bit. 1 and 8. Amen about what Holy Spirit wants to do in our lives. Um, 1 and 8, this is a key verse in the book of Acts. This is the key verse in the book of Acts. This is what? Yes, it's important for you to know that this is the key verse in the book of Acts. The primary purpose of the baptism in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is the receiving of power to witness. The primary purpose of the baptism in the Holy Spirit is the receiving of power to witness for Christ so that the loss will be won over to him and taught to obey all that Christ commanded. So the primary purpose of the Holy Spirit is, the primary purpose of the baptism in the Holy Spirit is what? Is the receiving of power to witness. The primary purpose of the baptism in the Holy Spirit is the receiving of power to witness for who? Christ, so that who will be one? The loss will be won over to him, to Christ, and taught to obey all that Christ commanded. So the primary purpose of the Holy Spirit, of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the primary reason for the Lord to baptize us with the Holy Spirit is so that we may do what? Witness. We may receive power. We need to receive power to witness. Yes, for Christ. We need power. The Holy Spirit will do the witnessing through us as we yield to him because um, I'm not sure if anyone has ever had the, that personal experience of when you wanted to go and witness to someone or, and, and you felt a spirit of fear try to ensnare you, slow you down, uh, snatch your words, or you just panic and say, I don't know what to say. Or if someone asks you about the Lord Jesus Christ, a panic, a, a, a spirit of fear may try to come on you to steal whatever you know is right to say. Now, Jesus knew this, and that's why he said to the disciples, but go ye and tarry there in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And he says, I must go, and I pray the Father will send back the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, he will, he said, and, and the Father will send the, 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 the Holy Spirit back, and you will be baptized with power. And you will also receive fire. Amen? There is, um, it's a wonderful feeling when the Lord uses you to win or to witness for him. Okay? And also, the Holy Spirit will give you the power to teach others to obey all that Christ commanded. The end result 
is that Christ may be known. The end result is that Christ may be known. The end result is that Christ may be what? Loved, praised, and made Lord of God's chosen people. The end result is that Christ may be known. Talk to me. What's the first fruit of the Spirit? Loved, praised, and made Lord of God's chosen people. Now, the Bible verse there says, but ye shall receive power after and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now power here is the Greek word dunamis dunamis and it means more than strength or ability it designates especially power in operation, in action. Luke, in his gospel and in Acts, he emphasizes that the Holy Spirit's power included the authority to drive out evil spirits and the anointing to heal the sick as the two essential signs accompanying the proclamation of the kingdom of God. So power here means more than strength or ability. Let me say this um, additionally. The release of the power of the Holy Spirit in Acts and through the believers' lives Cause them to witness with all boldness. I'll say it again. The release of the power of the Holy Spirit in acts in and through the believers' lives cause them to witness with all boldness, with great power, with many signs, wonders, and miracles. It was, I'm going to repeat this, the release of the power of the Holy Spirit. If you have it so far, just shout it out. The release of the power of the Holy Spirit in Acts, in the book of Acts, in and through the believers' lives, cause them to witness with all boldness, with great power with many signs, wonders, and miracles. It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. It's the power of the Holy Spirit working through believers that gives them this boldness. Amen? Has anybody ever experienced it? It just comes over you, and there is a surge. There is a power. It's dunamis power. Amen? A couple of more things I want to say about this passage of scripture in, in understanding that this is, remember, this is the key verse in, in the book of Acts. It's the key verse in the book of Acts. Anyone ever ask you, what's the key verse in the book of Acts? You know, it's Acts 1 and 8. Amen? The baptism in the Holy Spirit not only imparts power to preach Jesus as Lord, and Savior, but also increases the effectiveness of that witness because of a strengthening and deepened relationship with the Father, with the Son, 
and Holy Spirit that comes from being filled with the Spirit. There's something that happens as a result of, of, you, of you receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Powerful, amen? I think you all have it. I mean, I can go on and give you more points about how uh, this passage of Scripture, Acts 1 and 8, but it's, it's not ours. It's not, say with me, it's not me. It's the Holy Spirit in me. He does the work. Amen? And, and you always, it, it always helps you. You give glory back to the Lord because he's the one who wants to use us, but we have to yield to him. Amen? And he knows how to do all the work. Amen? Uh, the, the, the word of God says, he shall lead you and guide you to all truth and righteousness, right standing. Amen? So the baptism in the Holy Spirit brings personal what? Boldness and the power of the, into the believer's life in order to do what? Mm. Yes. Uh-huh, go on. It, it, let me, I really want to say a couple of things, a couple more things. The baptism in the Holy Spirit can be given only to those whose hearts are turned toward God in repentance from their wicked ways. It's maintained by the same sincere commitment to Christ. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is a baptism into the Spirit who is holy. That's why we find in Romans 1 and 4, it says a spirit of holiness. If the, the Spirit is truly at work in us, in all his fullness, we will live in greater conformity to Christ's holiness. And, and just wrapping up that piece, in light of these scriptural truths about the Holy Spirit, we, we who have been baptized in the Holy Spirit will have an intense desire to please Christ in whatever way we can. We'll have an intense desire to please who? In every way we can. There's a passion. Amen? Now, there's a couple of things that, that I need to point out, and, and I keep saying I'm going to move on. But those who claim the fullness of the Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, those who claim to be filled, baptized with the Holy Spirit, and I'll say it again, so if you want to jot it down, those who claim the fullness of the Spirit yet live a life contrary to the Spirit of holiness are deceived and untruthful. Do you understand that? Those who display spiritual gifts Miracles, spectacular signs, or inspiring oratory, speaking, yet lack true faith, love, and righteousness are operating not by the Holy Spirit, but by an unholy spirit, not from God. Does that make sense to you? So there are individuals that may be operating in that respect. They have these different things operating, but they don't have true faith. They're not operating under the Holy Spirit, but by an unholy spirit. That's why it's so important for believers to ask, once you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit, ask the Father for continual refilling. 
once you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit, doesn't mean that you remain full for the rest of your life here in, on, on earth. We need refilling. Say, I need refilling. That's why it's so important for us to assemble. Scripture says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as a manner of some is. Every day we find ourselves um, leaking. People are pulling from you. you may, they, they won't tell you that. But just being in the world, we're in the world, we're not of the world, but just being around other unbelievers. There are all kinds of spirits out there. And we must stay under the blood, and we must ask the Father, keep me under the blood, keep me filled. Father, I want to be filled with your spirit so I can do all you've called me to do. Amen? Because when you find yourself, uh, if I can just pause here, when you're, when you're leaking, uh, you, you become, anybody ever become weak? And, and you feel like you feel exhausted and you feel like giving up. You don't feel like assembling in the house of the Lord. You get tired and say, you know, I'm just tired. I just want to get some rest and I just want some me time. Those are signs of needing a, a, a refilling. Because when you, when you get that way, the enemy, he wants to weaken us so that we'll give up and we won't be effective in this present world. Are y'all with me? And, in, and as, you, as you give in and give heed to that spirit or flesh, because flesh has come under attack, okay? And, and uh, eventually you just, you give in to uh, pity, parties, uh, waywardness. Y'all with me? It, and, and it can happen to any believer, are y'all with me? But the enemy will have you fooled and say, you know what? You just need some you time. Please, don't you know Jesus got tired? He'll start telling you, okay? And there's nothing wrong with going on vacation, but take Jesus with you. There's, there's nothing wrong with, Okay, those, so, so don't misunderstand me. What I'm simply saying is when you feel like, well, I just don't feel like, I don't feel like performing ministries. I don't feel like doing what I, you know, what I'm involved in my ministry. I think, you know, I can take some time off from ministering. Are y'all with me? Th those, are, those are signs of, be, of, of leaking. Amen? And you have to run hard, run hard into God. Run hard in, passionately in, and say, Father, refill me. Y'all with me? Anybody ever felt like that? I just feel, I feel tired. I feel weak. And, and, and the enemy was, he'll be talking to you, and you'll be repeating him. If you're not careful, you just get sucked in. Y'all with me? Oh, I wish the house was here tonight. But they'll be able to, to get this. Amen? The Father loves us. Our Heavenly Father loves us. Amen? And the more I think about this teaching, the more I know it. I was sitting, thinking, reflecting about this, and the enemy was saying to me, you don't want to go and continue teaching on the baptism. After all, after all, uh, all the, uh, the things that have transpired within the last 24 hours, you really don't want, you want to just change it. And I was sitting there and said, oh, the devil is a liar. I hear you talking. We are going to continue. Amen? Because the Father wants us to do works. He wants us to do the greater works that Jesus says, in greater works shall you do. The Father wants us to be victorious. Amen? The Father wants us to live a life of abundance. Amen? The Father wants us to, as John says, I saw a number that no man could number. The Father loves souls. Are you with me? And he'll love souls through you if you let him. But when you feel like giving up, you can't love souls. You will be, uh, un you you'll start becoming unlovely.
because you'll be, have you ever heard the term monology sometimey? If it feel good, yeah, it's all right. today. Right. And you're operating in your own spirit in, in, in less than five minutes or maybe a half an hour later, something else comes over you. And you don't, y'all, let me go back to our line item here. Amen? So we want to have that dunamis power operating in our lives. Amen? And the Father will have it to be. But the Bible says, he that hungereth and thirst after shall be. Amen. Let's go on. There are other passages of scripture that you can read. Um, I gave you Acts 2 and 14 through 41. And uh, Peter is standing and he is making some declarations. But he had received, they had been filled. There was a baptism, amen? And he was announcing to all those that are around what was transpiring, what was happening, amen? That's what you'll find in that passage of Scripture. And let's look at Acts 4 and 31. It doesn't look like we're going to go to 9 tonight. I'm trying. I'm trying. But there's so much meat. Acts 4 and verse 31, it says there, <clears throat> Acts 4 and verse 31, it says, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were, yes, yes, several important truths stand out here. Number one, the term baptized with. The Holy Ghost describes the consecrating work of the Holy Spirit in initiating the believer into divine power for witness. Are y'all with me? Does, does this make sense to you? Y'all can say amen. Y'all can say go over it again. The term baptized with. Or filled, in this passage of Scripture, you see, filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit fills the believers, fills the believers. And believe me, filling needs to be repeated in our lives. Are y'all with me? There's a song we used to sing, I keep falling in love with him over and over, over and over again. It gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. All this love between my Lord and I, I keep falling in love with him. So being baptized with or in the Holy Ghost describes the consecrating work of the Holy Spirit in initiating the believer into divine power for witness. The terms filled and endued describe his actual equipping them, believers that is, for ministry. Filled and endued with power from on high. It means the Holy Spirit is equipping believers for ministry, we need to be endued with power from on high so that we can minister. Are y'all with me? You can't minister in your own strength. You won't have great works. We can't minister in our own strength. Can't do it. But the power of the Holy Spirit when we're baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, he does the work through us. And we need that for, we need it for ourselves. The first thing, we need the baptism in the Holy Spirit or of the Holy Spirit for ourselves. It's a keeping power. Old timers would say it's a keeping power. 
He will lead us and guide us. He will let us know, no, don't believe that lie. Young people, when you go off to college, he'll let you know, oh, no, hold up. And you don't want to override. You don't want to quench the Holy Spirit. Young people, even throughout the summer, we're getting into the summer, summer vacation. Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. Are y'all with me? The Holy Spirit comes for all ages. It's not for, well, well, it's only for those people that are old. The Holy Spirit is for all ages. Because some, some, some children may ask, when, when can I expect the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Are y'all with me? I don't know where I left off. Where did I leave off? Okay. So here we have, they were all, when they had prayed, the place was shaken. There were some things that were going on. God wants us to continually be filled. He wants that continual filling. All right. Number seven, God's word Okay, everybody see that? God's word cites several conditions by which the baptism in the Holy Spirit is. Number one, we must accept by faith Jesus Christ as. Acts 2, 38 through 40. Let me jot that down. Acts 8, 12 through 17. And what does this involve? It involves surrendering our wills to God. And you find that support in Acts 5.32. Acts 5.32. See if I can go there. Verses Acts 2.38. Says, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, what? Every one of you for the, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall, for the promise is unto you and to your, see that, and to all that are, even as many as the Lord, and with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this. Yes, then they that gladly received, yes, Yes, they that, were gl that gladly received his word. You want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Gladly receive the word of God. Pray. Amen? You don't want to push away. Well, it's my time off. I don't need to go to Bible teaching. I've had enough. You, re you with me? Amen. Then let's look over at... Acts, the fifth chapter, and verse 32. Does anyone have that? Okay, let's read this together. And it says, and we... Mm -hmm. Oh, God gives... To them that, yes, we have to obey who? The Holy Spirit. It says, and we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey him. Now, we obey God. We obey the Holy Ghost. 
the Holy Spirit. Some, some translation says the Holy Spirit. Amen? The three agree. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they agree. Amen? Let's go further. Let's go further. B, we must, we must desire to be filled. We must desire to be filled. Christians should have a deep hunger for the baptism in the Spirit. Why? Why? I mean, to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. To repent of your sins, give you the Lord your heart, okay? And he says, I will give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. But then we need the baptism of the... Let's look at what John says. John, the seventh chapter, verse 37. Okay, where are you? Verse 37, okay. It says, in the, that great, what happened? Mm -hmm. Okay, and? Yes. Let's read verse 39. But this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but he says, if you hunger, if any man thirst, and he says, let him do what? Come unto me, and, and he that believeth on me, as the scripture There must be a desire, there must be a, 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 what did I say? A deep hunger for the baptism in the spirit. C, we often receive, yes, it's an answer to prayer. You say, well, let's look and see what the scriptures say in Luke eleven thirteen. Eleven and thirteen. Luke's gospel. Tell me when you're there. We often receive the baptism in answer to prayer. Eleven thirteen, and it says. Mm -hmm. See that? You can ask him. He will give you the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, when you ask. Ask in faith, believing. Believe. Ask in faith, believing. He wants to give you the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now let's look at Acts 1 and 14. 1 and 14. Are you there? Let us read this. These all continued with? There was no division, <clears throat> but they were on one accord. Amen? These all continued with one accord in? And? Yes? Mm-hmm. Yes, there was a need to be in prayer and supplicating. Um, sometimes um, uh, the, the word tarry means to wait. It means to, it means to supplicate. It means to press in. It means to endure. It means, Father, I need you to baptize me. Take time. Take time praying. Amen? Okay. Now, um, 
for further um, review, we've read Acts 2, 1 through 4. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. We didn't read Acts 2, did we? Okay, let's read that, and then we will go to the next point. Acts 2, verse 1, and it says, And when the day of Pentecost had, they were all, and what happened? Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. Verse 4. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit will give the utterance. And let me give you these passages of Scripture, um, Acts 8, 15, and 17. Now, D. We should expect that. Expect it. God will baptize us with the Holy Spirit. Expect it. What did I say? Don't doubt it. I don't know if he's going to give it to. I don't know. No. I expect it. Whenever there's an expectation, there is always going to be a manifestation. Amen. Let's look and see what Mark's gospel says. Mark eleven twenty four. Okay, have you found it? Let us read it. It says, therefore, I... S- mm-hmm. 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 Okay. And the key verse there is, therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever. What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Believe and you shall have them. Faith is important. It's key. Eight, the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, did you know that? The fullness in the Holy Spirit is sustained. What does that mean? So that means if, well, I won't jump ahead. Acts 4 and 31, we read that? By prayer. It's sustained by prayer. You want to keep it? Keep praying. Amen? Keep witnessing. Are y'all with me? So a believer who is baptized with the Holy Spirit and you're praying and you're not witnessing, what's happening? There's a primary purpose. We must be baptized so that we can have power to do what? Witness and to win the loss to Christ. Are you with me? That's why we had the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some believers, some believers, okay, let me say this and carefully understand this. When you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. When you repent of your sins, Acknowledge that you're a sinner and you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You understand? But that's not the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You receive what? Everyone who has repented of their sins 
and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior receives the... But is that the baptism of the Holy Spirit? The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a power. It's a... Let me say it right. The anointing, it is the, the first evidence of one receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the speaking in as gives utterance. Some people receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit the same night or day that they repent of their sins because some fellowships go into you tarrying and praying and pressing in. Anybody know what I mean? Has anybody experienced that? You receive the baptism the same time. But some have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, and they've walked away with the gift of the Holy Spirit, but they passionately seek the Father for the baptism, and it came later. How many know what I'm talking about? Because some have been taught that you don't have the gift of the Holy Spirit the day that you repent of your sins. But the scripture says, and you shall repent of your sins, and you shall receive the but it doesn't say, but Jesus said to the disciples, he says, but go and tarry ye in Jerusalem until you receive that power. Until you receive the baptism. Amen? Are we clear with that? I don't know how I went there. I think we were talking about witnessing. But the fullness in the Holy Spirit is sustained in the believer's life by, was the first thing, prayer, and that's Acts 4.31, by witness, Acts 4.31 and 33, worship in the Spirit. You mean we supposed to worship in the Spirit? Absolutely. I don't know how a believer can keep the power of the Holy Ghost working in their lives, and they fail to worship. Well, that's, that, that part of the service is not, or that, 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 that's, that's not, you know, if I miss praise and worship, it's okay. Or if I don't praise God throughout the week, that's okay. I'll just wait until I get to the house of God. Y'all with me? But we need to be worshiping in the spirit and a sanctified life. Ephesians 5 and 18, a sanctified life. It doesn't look like I'm going to get to the last point, which is okay. We can save that for next week. But let's, did we read Acts 4 and 33? Did we? No, we didn't. We read Acts 4 and 31, but we didn't read Acts 4 and 33. We read the prayer scripture, we read the witness, amen, and they spake the word of God with boldness, amen, because that's how you win souls to Christ. Verse 33 says, and with, yes, mm -hmm. great grace was upon them. I hesitated to use that word because I didn't want to be misunderstood, but there is a grace that the Holy Spirit brings in our life. There is a grace. The Holy Spirit is not dogmatic. Anybody know what I mean when I say dogmatic? Harsh, hard, you're going to hell. Holy Spirit doesn't say that. He doesn't. That's not how you win souls to Christ. The Bible says, with loving kindness have I, are y'all with me? And someone told us, and some of us have experienced, you're going to hell, those words. And you were knocking knees, okay? Some of us have experienced someone saying that to us because that's just the way it rolled. Are y'all with me? There is a truth to that. If you don't accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, that's where you will lie. Amen? 
but that's not going to draw souls to the Lord Jesus. Amen? He loves us. Sometimes that's the only thing the Holy Spirit will say through you. God loves you. Because he loves every one of us. Amen? And the next time, it may be something else. Are you with me? Along with our conduct. Ooh. Okay. Let's wrap it up here. Let's look at Ephesians 5 and 18 and 19, and then we are going to close. Ephesians. And let's get ready to wrap up Ephesians 5, verse 18. Is this helping anyone tonight? Is it interesting? Let us read. It says in Ephesians, and I want to make sure I read one thing in closing after I give you these scriptures, but let's go to Ephesians 5, 18 and 19. It says, and... Mm -hmm. Yes, but verse 19. Amen. Be filled carries a meaning in Greek of repeated, repeatedly being filled. And, and I know that, I, I just know that, but how many have experienced repeated fillings? Amen? God's children must experience constant renewal. Believers, God's children need to experience constant renewal. Are y'all with me? You say, where is that? You can read Ephesians 3, 14 through 19. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. Also Romans 12 and 2. Believers, God's children must, did I say maybe, must experience constant renewals by repeatedly being filled with the Holy Spirit. Christians are to be baptized in the Holy Spirit after conversion, yet they are to be filled with the Spirit repeatedly for worship, for service, and witness. Believers experience repeated fillings with the Spirit by maintaining a living faith in Jesus Christ, by being filled with the Word of God, by praying, by giving thanks and singing to the Lord, by serving others, are you hearing me, and doing what the Holy Spirit Spirit desires. And what we read in scripture, this is something that you experience. We experience singing to the Lord with joy, psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, and submitting one to another. A Holy Ghost is the keeping power, the Holy Ghost in us, working a great work, amen? Not just for us, but helping us to love and submitting one to another. Some people that don't, don't like to submit to another. Then I question, I question the filling. But we're supposed to. We're supposed to be accountable to believers that are filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, you cannot be, don't, you're not accountable to someone who's not baptized in the Holy Ghost. But I'm going to tell you something that someone who's not filled with the Holy Spirit can tell if you are a believer or not. They can tell you, you know, up sometime, down sometime, you're cantankerous and you act like they do. They know the difference. 
The Bible says we're living epistles read and known of all men. And I am going to wrap up with this. Powerful. The initial coming of the Holy Spirit on the believer, no matter how powerful it is, if this does not find expression, if that believer does not find expression in a life of prayer, if they're not witnessing and living a life of holiness, the experience will soon become a fading glory. Are y'all with me? So there must be, we must be witnessing. Amen? We must be worshiping. We must be reading the word of God. We must be hungering and thirsting. And as Jesus says, he that hungers, if you thirst for it, he said, you're going to be filled. Are y'all with me? I am going to close and we're going, you can keep this. Please remember it next week. But if you forget it, I'm gracious. I won't be dogmatic. I'll give you number 10. And maybe we'll do a little reviewing or uh, giving you some additional notes that I didn't, I kind of skipped over for the sake of time. But I really wanted you to get this. I want us to get this and understand that the Father wants us to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He wants us to experience repeated fillings because our assignment, the key verse, the key verse in Acts is what? Acts what? One and eight. That's the key verse in the entire book of Acts. But ye shall receive power after the and we shall be witnesses. We win the loss to Christ and teach them how to obey. Now, how to obey. If you teach others, how can you teach others to obey the word of God if you don't obey the word of God? You with me? So there must be an, a, a, a passion to serve the Lord to, let me stop. Let me stop because I don't want to go into another half an hour. <laughs> I want to be gracious to each one of you that have assembled here. God bless you. Father, we just thank you. We give you all the glory and honor for your word. Father, as the psalmist said, thy word is a lamp into our feet, a light into our pathway. And Father, we just pass.